Hi, I'm Chaplain Larry Crabtree, the Maryland State Police in the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. And I'm Chaplain Charlie Wharton with the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office. Larry, we talk a lot about law enforcement officers and the impact that the job has on them. We would be neglectful if we didn't talk about families yeah. because this is something that is a huge part yeah. of the police culture. So in this segment, we're going to talk about the impact that the job has on families and really that families can have on law enforcement officers. So yeah. why is there a stress in the law enforcement family? Well, it's a good question, and uh, this is an important t subject. Our families are important, our marriages, our kids. And I just want to say this as we start straight out. The stress of being a police officer is a whole lot different from the stress experienced by civilians. And research overwhelmingly shows that police are at significantly greater uh, risk of divorce. They have the highest rate of divorce of any career path that you could choose. Police are at the top. And officers, I think, have to acknowledge the stress and they have to recognize how important their personal relationships, especially in their marriage and with their family, how much how important that really is and to do something about it we have to be intentional and proactive because of the reality of what it is that we're facing you know a lot of people when they look at a law enforcement officer they believe that um, when they come in they take the uniform off they throw it in the washer and all of a sudden they become human again and that really is not that's not the case because there's a lot of there's a lot of yuck there's a lot of baggage that comes with it that you can't just park it you know in the patrol car. Um, what does that have? What kind of an impact does that have in the family? Well, well, the, the realities are things like this. I mean, it's again shift work and long hours. Do you know how difficult it is often for a police officer to get time off for family events? That's, that's a real problem, and that keeps happening. Uh, that, your wife's not going to be happy about that. Your kids aren't happy about that. But that's pretty pretty common in law enforcement work. Um, there is a conflict between work and family roles. You know, while you're on duty, um, officers may may always uh, you, you feel like you have to be prepared to defend yourself. Um, you have to respond quickly to the situations that are there. That's what you're trained to do. Well, try that at home with your wife. I mean, you're going to get hit upside the head. It just doesn't fly, right? I mean, yeah, I did. I did try that. It doesn't work. It, it doesn't. So you have to be able to differentiate between my role as a police officer when I'm at work and my role as dad and husband when I'm at home. You don't respond and act the same way in those environments. Let me give you a classic example of this from my own life, and that was when I was my, when my daughter was of dating age. I was a school resource officer. And so when she would come in and she was saying, or, or I'm going to go hang out with my friends, or I'm going to go out on a date, you know, my first response was, who is it? What are you, where are you guys going to be? And, I'll, and eventually Jeannie was the one that would tell me, all right, you need to take your, your uniform off and put your dad hat on because she's got enough cops around her to keep her safe. She's only got one dad yeah. to help her get through this. Yeah. And then also, you have to be careful of your personality. And what's demonstrated between when you're at work and when you're at home. Again, on the job, officers tend to be very analytical. Uh, they're going to be assertive in order to maintain safety. Well, again, if you bring that personality into your home, it doesn't fly real well. That creates conflict and those stresses that destroy. Um, here's a big one for police officers. Many families suffer from financial problems and stresses. Um, on any marriage, financial debt and struggling is probably the number one cause of divorces and stress. And police officers are not paid a lot, particularly in the early years. And if you overextend yourself and get into a lot of debt, that really creates disharmony at home and a lot of struggle. So police officers need to be careful of that. Uh, there's the strain for the family of watching the one that they love having to cope with those moments when there's some kind of serious trauma. Uh, they struggle with the negative perception of the police that's in public. I mean, can you imagine again, a police officer, um, he, he comes home, it's his time off, he's with his family, they're going to go out to spend some time together, and again, somebody happens to be where they're at that perhaps arrested them earlier, 
and they come up and start mouthing off or call. I mean, do you, can you imagine the stress? I mean, you're trying to enjoy your family, and this is what you're dealing with. I mean, who else deals with that? Well, let me tell you, that impacts your family. This is real stuff, right? Yeah, and uh, as you were saying that, I was I was thinking back to a time. I'm just sitting in my house, and one of the kids from the high school come drops by my house, knocks on the door, walks in, and wants to talk to me about something. And uh, you know, I couldn't go anywhere without saying, uh, "All right, that's who that person is," and uh, they shouldn't be together because one of them's got a warrant or whatever else. So it really is very difficult to get away from. And uh, I'm really thankful that my family was able to to make that adjustment. It's easy to identify the problems. What are some solutions? I think this is really important. Again, police officers have to learn to maintain an identity outside of being a police officer when they're off duty. Um, Having a separate life and identity outside of policing enables that officer to reduce the burden uh, of always feeling as if he's on and, and doing the job. So you've got to have that buffer. You, and again, that has to be intentional. It's not going to happen by itself. I also suggest that we intentionally develop some close relationships with couples that are not in any way involved with law enforcement. <laughs> I mean, butchers and I mean, whatever else you can think of. Get them as friends, okay? Build close relationships with some of those people. And it's gonna do two things. One, they're gonna benefit from your perspective as a law enforcement officer on dealing with, you know, just tensions and conflicts of life. But you as a police officer get to learn, hey, there's other ways to deal with problems than the police way. And so that's a really beneficial relationship. I highly recommend that take place. Uh, that's often not the case in law enforcement. I think police officers need to learn and live again within their financial means. If you're struggling financially, pick up some, I mean, there's all kinds of series out there. Dave Ramsey, I mean, is excellent. Just how to get your debt and budget in control because you do not need, you've got enough stress in your life. You don't need financial stress messing with you and your family. That's really important. And uh, in my 26 years as a chaplain, again, I have learned that, that law enforcement can often carry as much as 500 hours or more in vacation time. (laughs) And I don't know what it is. They love to pack it up. Well, listen, take some vacation. Blow some of those hours. It's perfectly normal and your family needs it. So stop the 500 hour vacation package that's sticking there and start burning that stuff for what they're intended for. So you can have a relationship with your family and get away from this stress and job and you can have that identity outside of law enforcement. You say this and it caused me to, to chuckle because I look back on one of my one of the most special days in my law enforcement career was when I got a sticker on my timesheet that said you have use it or lose it time. At that point I knew that I had made it. What other profession and you're not going to give back vacation time if you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker or whoever else. You know, we, we need to overcome that and so anyway. Yeah. I think we start I think I went to preaching right there so this, and one final thing I think is helpful is whenever I do marriage counseling and pre-marriage counseling, there's a little exercise that I tell people they need to have in their life. I call it the practice of two chairs. And studies show that if a husband and wife can actually sit down and focus on each other for 10 minutes every day, you'll have a good marriage. But you don't want just a good marriage, right? You want an excellent marriage. You want a great marriage. And you know, if you can sit down together and talk as a couple for 20 minutes each day, you're going to have a great marriage. Statistically, it shows that out. It proves it. And what I'm talking about is find a place in your house. It's two chairs that's yours. The kids aren't there to bother you. You're not going to worry about them unless they're broken, bruised, or bleeding. I mean, other than that, they can learn, hey, this is mom and dad time. And you use that time just to talk about each other and what's going on. Don't, Don't deal with the problems of the day. Just talk. And if you can do that for 10 minutes a day, you got a good marriage. 20 minutes, you have a great marriage. One of the best practices a law enforcement officer could do. It's in every one of my marriage counseling sessions. It's an important principle. So now I need to go buy a home, go home and buy two chairs. I would suggest it. Okay. If you don't have to already, that, that's a problem. <laughs> Apparently, you need the financial lessons. <laughs> well, Charlie, it's time to say goodbye for this week. And so our wish to you again is be strong. And be safe.